Oddball. I am Charlotte Wilder in New York City, not that you could tell. Amin El Hassan in Phoenix. Amin, how you doing? I'm doing good. Final four hangover. Not really, because I didn't go out or do anything fun, but it's happening in my city. I see everyone walking around with sunglasses on for wow. a browse. Staring at the sun for the eclipse. Anyway, oh, more right. on that later. Uh, also, more on the women's championship, South Carolina versus Iowa. Uh, biggest basketball game of the year. It, it drew 14.2 million viewers. I can't wait to talk about it. But this is oddball. We got some NBA stuff we got to cover. So we're going to play odd one out. Do you remember this game? Very, very vaguely, but yes. <laughs> we got six big stories. We can only talk about five of them. We have five minutes to talk about the first one, four minutes to talk about blah, blah, blah. You get it. Right. Um, <laughs> let's start with door number one. All right. What do you got for us? What do you got, producers? Oh. Oh. The, Char- the, Char- the Charlotte. The Dallas Mavericks. The Charlotte Mavericks would be funny. The, <laughs> the Charlotte Mavericks. Mavericks. I am a Maverick. I'm Charlotte and I'm a Maverick. Uh, the Mavs pull ahead. I mean, the Mavs have won 14 of 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a 147, 136 overtime win over the Rockets. The Rockets are now kissing their playoff dreams mm-hmm. goodbye. Um, this obviously, who cares about the Rockets, but we care a lot about the Mavs because they are now fifth in the West. People thought they were going to be a playing team, but they have just been storming uh around the rest of the league what does this mean like what how does this how does this change stuff in the west wow i mean the west is in complete fluidity first of all 48 points for kyrie irving while fasting again i gotta keep pointing that out and not not just fasting the hard part about fasting that people don't understand is it's not just the micro of today i had nothing to eat until maybe right around tip off it's also the macro of at this point he's been doing this for 27 straight days. And so there is a cumulative effect of fasting and then continuing to engage in strenuous physical activity. But yeah, that's as, remarkable. As far as what this means for the rest of the West. Okay, so because Phoenix lost last night to the Pelicans, mind you, now the Mavs have a two game lead above the Suns on the sixth seed. The Suns stay at six, even though they have the same record as the Pelicans. Why? Because they have the tiebreaker. They beat the Pelicans three times already this season. So even though big win for the Pelicans to close that gap and tie them up, it still isn't enough. The Pelicans have to be a game better than the the Suns in order to get that sixth seed. And then further down, we know that the Lakers lost to the Timberwolves, which affects two things at once. One, it affects the Lakers' chase of seven. Next week, three things at once. It affects the Lakers' chase of seven. It Uh closes the gap between the Lakers and the Warriors from 10 to 9. And also, Minnesota is now back in control of the one seed for the time being. Lots and lots of permutations and things happening. And for the Mavs, the big thing for them is, I think Nico Harrison in that front office, they got to do a little bit of this because the trades that they did at the deadline are directly aligned and impactful in the winning that they've done recently. I think it's also just like the fact that Kyrie and Luca are working together. I think a lot of people were so skeptical and this season has shown, I mean, something, something like last night where Luca is 37 and Kyrie has 48, like if the rest of your team shows up somewhat, you're still going to have a pretty good chance. And it's also like they, they've just gotten hot at, at exactly the right time, which is to, to save themselves. I mean, they're not going to be in the play in like it's it's exciting for Dallas. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the other thing is you say if everyone else is doing their job, that's a lot easier when you have other people capable of doing the job, right? It, it's harder when you're kind of bare, cupboard bare with just whatever's available, just throw something out there like it's a potluck, right? When you got guys who are good at their roles and buy into their roles, this thing gets a lot easier. Also, man, how many times was Dylan Brooks in the blender last night? I oh felt God, at dude. one point I legit felt bad for him. I said, all right, Luke, me too. That's enough. All right, he's I mean, had enough. 
Same. I was like, we have clowned on this guy. And then occasionally, like, this guy has been amazing this season. And, like, sometimes there have been fights that didn't have to do with Dylan Brooks and where Dylan Brooks looked like the good guy. And so I feel well, like a once. little bit... Let's not say sometimes. Okay, that happened okay. one time. <laughs> All right. It happened once. I do, though, feel like a soft spot for Dylan Brooks just because he's become, like, such a such a character, even if it's not always for the right reason. So I'm going to be a little bummed that we don't get him talking trash in in the play-in tournament because that would have been really fun yeah uh charlotte my decision to book hotels in dallas for the finals not so crazy now is it not looking so do you think they could do you think that they could be in the finals They're, they've been playing the best basketball i think in the league over the last month or so mm -hmm. why not if i'm dallas i'm saying why not us and if i'm amino hassan and the oddball program i'm saying why not book these hotel rooms just in case? Because you know what's going to happen when they make it. Everyone's going to rush. And now you got $1,000 hotel rooms and no one's got time for that. You are like the hotel. Um, I don't know. You're really good at hotels. What's the word for that? A mean. No, well, is it? You're really a mean at hotels. And that's, that's going to take off. Hmm. Just keep saying All right. it. Yeah, okay. make it happen. you're a mean, you're a mean in hotels. Yeah. I, it's not a sentence anyway. It, it, not yet, but it can be. Okay. All right. Well, we're out of time on topic one, so we better go to door two. Right. What do we got? Bucks and free fall. Because I'm Woo. free. <laughs> free falling. Yeah. No. Na, 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 na. I don't know the words. I used to. Really? Yeah. Soccer. But now I can't remember a single one of them because you asked me. Free, free falling. Those are two. Free falling. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, okay. So the Bucks lost again to the Knicks. Um, this is a fourth straight loss for Milwaukee. I mean. Glass half full. It's their okay. first loss to a good team in the last four games. So. Okay. Things are looking up. When you put it that way, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, though, man. They're 15 and 17 under Doc Rivers, and I'm not actually as interested in talking about, like, Doc Rivers versus Adrian Griffin and all the coaching stuff as I am. The fact that, like, this is not statistics. This is this is eye test stuff. Anytime I see the Bucks, especially last night when the Knicks got hot and just started blowing them out of the water, Dame looks so sad, and Giannis looks so frustrated, and Brooke Lopez looks like his head's going to explode. Like, do you see that too, or is that am I am I projecting onto them? Other than that, how is the play, Mrs. Lincoln? <laughs> it looks not good. The play looks bad. The uh, look, there's a lot to get to when you talk about the Milwaukee Bucks. I think the biggest thing is I, I just don't see a chemistry out there, and it's funny because we're talking about Game seventy eight, Game seventy seven, something along those lines. And the chemistry still seems to evade them. The bigger issue now is because of that loss, the Knicks are now one game back, as are the Orlando Magic, who quietly have been playing pretty well as well recently. Yeah. So we went from talking about will it be Cavs or Bucks at the two or three, Cavs are already up out of there. They're all the way down to five, mm -hmm. uh, with six not that far behind from Indiana. You've got Milwaukee now with the, the slimmest of leads for that two seed, the Eastern Conference playoff picture by the time this week is over and Sunday hits and the last day is played might be wildly different than what it is right now. It's so crazy. There are 20 teams in the playoffs. Only Boston has secured the one seed. Like everything, yep. this makes it so exciting. This makes this week so much fun. And this is what you said before about adding the play-in, how it just makes everything for for so many more teams these games still matter what do you think like what what can the bucks do like what do you do if you're if you're in that locker room trying to inspire these guys like how i it it, it feels like morale's got to be so low in there right now i think the only natural reset session is the start of the playoffs at this point okay. you can only kind of deal with hey what do we need to do better that we didn't do tonight. That's what it is. Once the playoffs start, if I'm Doc, I take the team away. If they're going to be the three seed mm -hmm. or four seed <laughs> or five seed, 
because Yikes. all of those things are possible. <laughs> but any one of those seeds comes with a small positive. That small positive is you know who you're going to play in the playoffs. One and two <laughs> don't. They really don't. So they're, they're actively scouting the play-in tournament, whereas yeah. three, four, five, six, they know who they're going to play, so they're spending their week focused on the impending opponent. So if I'm Doc Rivers, regular season ends on Sunday – Monday, kiss your families goodbye. Tuesday, we're going on camp. From Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and perhaps returning on Friday, depending on whether we're home for the playoffs or we're on the road, which, again, could be a possibility. But I'm spending these next days having a mini camp. We're hitting a massive reset button. We're doing two-a-day practices. We're getting focused because now all that shit doesn't matter anymore what matters is the opponent ahead of us we're focusing all of our energies and now it's easier to block out all the other extemporaneous things that you have to deal with from night to night in the regular season mode and put on those blinders tunnel vision for the playoffs yeah, a trip a, a trip to the doctor's office with doc all right i mean uh, that's a bad joke that we're gonna pretend i didn't say uh mm. we gotta go to door number three Ah. Oh. Suns Clippers double header. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, the Suns play the Clippers twice this week. They play yes. tonight, Tuesday in Phoenix, and then tomorrow night in LA. Um, Suns lost to the Pelicans in their last game. And then the Clippers had this massive comeback to beat the Cavs 120 to 118. Mm-hmm. Also, the Cavs blew a 26 point lead, which is. The Cavs are watching their season go down the toilet bowl as they are dropping, dropping, dropping. But the the, the Clippers and the Suns, the Suns, literally their entire remaining schedule, every game is a Super Bowl, twice against the Clippers. <laughs> then they've also got the Kings on the docket, and they've got Minnesota on the docket as well. Not only are they, those all good teams, but those are all good teams playing with purpose. The T-Wolves are trying to be the one seed. The Kings are trying to move up in the play-in. The Clippers are trying to hold off of the surging Dallas Mavericks for that four seed and that home court advantage in the first round. So it's like there's no break at all for Phoenix. There is zero margin for error. This is, like I said, a Super Bowl, much like the next game against the Clippers is going to be a Super Bowl and the game against the T-Wolves and the Kings, also Super Bowls. Lots of Super Bowls this week. A lot of Super Bowls. It's almost as if, I mean, the playoffs have already started. Oh, there it is. Order up. Uh, do you have a bell? I do have a bell. I've been ringing this bell all, all year long. Is that the first what? time you've heard the bell? Yes. I've had a desk bell. Every time I make a big point, I always hit the, the bell. Are it's you never, kidding me? I'm not kidding you. It's right here. It's not, okay, this well, is that's not a sound because- effect. Well, we changed one thing on our audio today, and that's why I can hear it. It's it's it, the noise suppression was on. I had I didn't know you had a bell. Oh my god! Okay, well, that's wild. Uh, Wilder. Collecting myself here, <laughs> Wilder. Uh, between Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi, mm-hmm. Booker, Durant, and Beal, mm-hmm. what what do you like? I feel like there's a pretty equal matchup in terms of Suns Clippers right now. Do you think one team has the edge? I think the Clippers have the edge. I think first of all, the the two two of their three players are excellent defensive players, right? Mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are excellent elite level defensive players. I would say Durant and Booker are good defensive players, but not elite, not at this stage of Durant's career. And then I think Harden, beyond being a better player than Beal, I think he's Mm a more natural fit. They've seeded, he's our ball handler, he's our point guard. He makes things happen to Harden for the Clippers. Their fit is a lot more fluid. The Suns trying to get Beal feeling comfortable. I feel like he takes a back seat. He's trying to become a smaller version of himself to fit those other two guys. And it works for them, but I feel like they're also leaving a lot on table. He's not quite the Bradley Beal that we feared in Washington, whereas Harden, maybe not quite what he was in Philly and Houston and Brooklyn, but he's still really dangerous. Tell us what's behind door number four. 
Well, what's behind door number four should say South Carolina caps perfect season with championship. But because of the algorithm, I have to say, and destroy Caitlin Clark along the way. 14.2 million viewers watch Charlotte. It's ESPN's highest audience for any basketball game ever on record. Staley is, Don Staley is 109 and three uh, at South Carolina. And by the way, shout out to the person she gave a shout out to in her post game press conference. And on the floor, Winston Gailey, he is the assistant coach. He uh, came from the NBA and was on the staff. And she was talking in the post game about the amazing scouting job that he did on Caitlin Clark for this uh, Gamecocks team. So, Charlotte, uh, I guess what I have to ask you here is, <laughs> Caitlin Clark, most three-pointers in women history, most three-pointers in assistant NCAA attorney history, 1,000 points in two seasons, What's the takeaway from that magical event? The takeaway from Caitlin Clark is that she grew this game this year in a way that we just haven't seen. The way she was selling out arenas. I think everybody's given her her flowers, including Don Staley. But what you said, I mean, about Don shouting out her assistant coaches, about her making sure that everybody gets their flowers is why this team is so successful. She's unbelievable at building, at, at leading people at, she said, you know, leaders don't create more followers. They create more leaders. And to take a team like South Carolina, which lost its five starters last year, and then go undefeated and win a national championship and have two of your freshmen show up looking cool as cucumbers in the biggest moment. It's like, well, that's what great coaching is. I was like ugly crying when she was crying to Holly Rowe at the end of the game. They asked them, when did you guys know that this season could be special? And they said after game one in Paris, that, that's when they knew. So that's pretty remarkable. Again, congratulations to Dawn Staley and South Carolina. What's behind door number six? Oh no, we've door number five still. I mean, oh, and yeah. it's up to, and it, this is for you. We have to, we get to talk about the curve your enthusiasm finale, yes. famously a big basketball topic. Um, I'm just gonna let you. You've got a minute for this, so I'm just gonna let you cook. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying not to spoil too much, but everything that you suspected what this season was building up to for a season finale is exactly what it ended up happening to be. Uh, we got a lot of great memories. Uh, R.I.P. to Richard Lewis. Also. We saw Larry David at the garden last week trying to do the heart sign and not quite knowing how to do it. Turns out he was shouting out a scene in the season finale, the series finale, and nobody else picked up on it. They just thought Larry just didn't know how to do a heart thing, which I, I don't know how to do either. Yes, you I do. Don't know. Come on. I don't know. It's but all I got to say is this. Jerry Seinfeld, those laser discs are somewhere. And we're going to find them. <laughs> and Leon's going to find them and he's going to get to watch because Leon Black finally watched Seinfeld in its entirety. Oh, my God. Are you so sad that it's over? I'm incredibly sad. I want them to come back for more. This isn't one of those, oh, that ended perfectly. Yes, it ended perfectly, but I can never get enough Kirby enthusiasm. I'd watch a spinoff with Leon. I Like, look. Whatever it is, I just need more. If you build it, Amin will come. Let's see what we didn't get to talk about today. Door number six. Oh, Coach Cal leaving Kentucky? Yeah, mm. well, shout out to Arkansas. You know what they say. Cal sees the writing on the wall before even it's been written. So I, I guess think. he saw something. And maybe what he saw was some chicken. Some Tyson well, chicken. <laughs> and Walmart. Well, stay Stay tuned because and Jerry Jones. <laughs> we've got more chicken, chicken to get to in the B block. Ah! Art Garfunkel, um, in the '90s, he was like sad. I don't know. It was like an old magazine article or something, and it said that he was sad, so he started practicing his free throws, and he could do like 102 free throw. Like he got that was his record. Bullshit. Bull what? Bullshit. You don't think He's he not, actually did that? No, Art Garfunkel's not shooting 100 free throws in a row. He's not making 100 free throws. He might attempt, but he's not making. I don't know. I feel like he could. I feel like if you're depressed and all you have is like shooting free throws, you could maybe get to 102. Have you seen his hair? No one with hair like that could shoot 100 free throws in a row. Mm, I don't know. The point of this is that I was like, I'm going to go practice my free throws. <laughs> you're inspired so by I did. Art Garfunkel. Yeah, I was like, if Art Garfunkel can go practice free throws, because I was like a little embarrassed. I was like, well, you know, I'm 
a like old lady by myself in the park, but I went and there was this uh, little kid playing with his um, nanny. And I heard him say like, I'm Caitlin Clark as he tried to hit a three. And I was like, this, it was a kind of thing where I was like, there is no way that no one would believe me if I, it's like overheard I get New it. York. I get it. No, no, I get it. I'm, you know, she's been on TV. If you're a kid, you watch, you're watching basketball on TV. I could see that. Say, I'm yeah. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. It was so cute. And it, I mean, I like started tearing up and the nanny was like, he says he wants to watch a WNBA draft. Um, no, but then that, he challenged that sounds okay. as much horseshit as it, Garfunkel hitting 100 free throws. That's, no, no kid says I want to watch the draft, Charlotte. Well, he beat me at around the world. So, what'd the nanny do? She rebounded for us. Nanny Fortson. <laughs> Welcome back to Oddball. Yesterday was a big day, and we all looked up at the. Did you stare at the sun at me? I did not. I, I'm not I'm not the 45th president of the United States, so no. Mm, yeah, nice. Me neither, for sure. Yeah. I didn't look at the sun without glasses on. Um, we have a really fun segment here. Uh, speaking of eclipses, which is something that won't happen for another 20 years, mm -hmm. what are some things that happened this season in the NBA that we won't see well, for hold another... On. Hold on, Charlotte. As... <laughs> if we are going to look at some NBA solo eclipses... Let oh, me don yikes. my special. I got these glasses from the future. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I got in my DeLorean. Went all the way to the distant year 2015. Came back. Now I've got all the answers. Hit me. Are you sure you didn't get them from the 45th president's? No, but I didn't. Okay. At, a, at, a, at a gentleman in, on January 6, 2021. Yeah. No, I, I definitely <laughs> did not get it there. <laughs> yikes. Okay. Uh, let's see what these stats are. Number okay. one is that. We will have a rookie lead the league in blocks. Rookie leading the league in blocks because that's what Victor Wembanyama did. Uh, I'm going to say, yes, in the next 20 years, we will not have someone lead the league in blocks who's never played an NBA game before. You know why? Okay. Because the block will be outlawed. There will be no more blocking in basketball anymore after Victor Wembanyama changes the game so irre irreversibly that we're just going to be like, you know what? We need to ban the block. From now on, you can only contest, but you can't make contact with the ball during a shot. Okay. Mm, That's from the future. Nah. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, save this for when you're What happened to the music? Years. Keep the music going. I liked it. It gave, it gave it nice, nice gravitas. Yeah, I felt see, I felt like I'm doing serious work here. There it is, yeah. uh, okay, the number two stat, I really like this one, is that a bench player uh, will score 50 for the worst team in the league. This is the Pistons, Malachi Flynn. He scored 50 in a loss against the Hawks, and then he scored three points in the next game. Mm -hmm. And he was, and he said, quote, I don't think it's a fluke in any way. <laughs> you know what, Charlotte? I do think this is going to happen in the next 20 years. You know what? I think it's going to happen next year. And do you know, do you know who I think is going to do it? Malachi Flynn for the Detroit <laughs> Pistons. They're going to be the worst team again next year. He's going to come off the bench and he's going to prove it wasn't a fluke because you know what they say? If you get 50, you're bound to get 50 again. Do they say that? I say that. Well, they say that. That's up there with outlawing the block. Um, oh, here is a good one. In the next 20 years, I mean, are we going to see a coach with a losing record coach in the All-Star game? Because that's what Doc Rivers did when he took over from Adrian Griffin. Uh, and I forget. Oh, my God. I have yeah. basketball sunglasses on. This is what? incredible. Uh, is that going to happen? Is that ever going to happen again? He was 3-7 and seven at the time of the All-Star break. But everyone says, hey, he just got there. Luckily, he's been under 500 since then as well. So oh. we're still we're still firmly in the under 500 range. Will that happen again? Wait, it's coming to me now. 11 years from now, when Joe Mazzula takes over at midseason for someone, starts doing jujitsu in the locker room, and loses the locker room almost instantly, but not before he coaches the All-Star team. I disagree with you because... It a, it'll either be in three years that happens or never, and he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Of all time, yeah. That's a good yes. point. Um, all right, what else do we have? Oh, will two players drop 70 in the same week the way that Embiid uh, and Luca did? Embiid had 70 on January 22nd, and then on January 26th, 
Luca had 73. Is that going to happen again in the next 20 years? Yes, it's going to happen, but it won't happen next year. What's going to happen is it's going to, we're going to transition to this more defensive NBA that we've seen over the last 40 games or so. And then at some point, people are going to complain. And just like this year, in the middle of the season, unannounced, no memo, they're just going to start calling every foul again. And that week, we'll get not one, not two, but four players scoring 70 all in the same week, including two in the same game. All right. Takes from the future, everybody. Uh, That's all we've got for All Ball today. Thank you for watching.